The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the Association for Software Testing, its management, sponsors, or staff. James, welcome. Thank you, Ben. So, big day today, right? How's the conference so far? It's been amazing. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. It's the first time I've been to CAST. That's right. It's the first time I've been to New York. Really? So, wow. it's a, been a pretty amazing combination. So, you've done the tourist thing, you've been around the city? Yeah, well, um, I've, I've been around Manhattan, all of Manhattan. I took a cruise around on Sunday afternoon. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. And it was great. Yeah, it was really good. Good yeah. way to see it, and it was hot. Sunny, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> it's been nice and, and warm, which is helpful. Yeah, and um, yeah, tomorrow I'll be going up the Empire State Building, going up oh. to Times Square, something like that, maybe Very Central nice. Park, and then I'm flying out tomorrow afternoon. Wow, wow, lovely. busy trip for you. Yeah. But before that, we've got you, and we're going to talk a little bit about your talk that you gave yeah. the other day. So uh, you spoke on Tuesday. You were the second talk Tuesday of the morning. day. Yes, you, that's you right. got to follow up James. Yeah. It's a tough one, I understand. I, it really was, because he broke the equipment when he took his laptop out, <laughs> and it caused total technical chaos. So yeah, it's always tough following James back, and it was even tougher yesterday. It was yesterday. a little tougher this time. And you talked to, you, your talk was mainly around the, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the economics of uh, certifications and standards. Yeah, more the economics of standards. but. Um, I, I wanted to do something slightly different from what I've seen before because I, I didn't want to do just a straightforward critical attack on standards um, because other people have done that m much better than me and I thought I'd be preaching to the converted here at CAST. Indeed. Uh, so yeah, it would have been it would have been easy. People going whoop whoop whoop, fine, we hate standards, <laughs> I, and that would have been that. But I, I wanted to challenge people and um, I wanted to explain what my take on standards and how I thought, how I think that they're competitive, sorry, I, um, they're anti-competitive, yeah. uh, they're a threat to good um, testers, to context-driven testers, and I think, I thought that there should be a response, so I wanted to challenge people, you know, what are you going to do about it, because if we just sit back, um, I think that the standards lobby have gone about their business in a way that uh, it defines their opponents as being irrelevant. The word that they use to um, describe opponents of standards is craftsmen. Now I think a craftsman is a great Indeed. Uh, I, to be a craftsman is a great thing but I've um, worked for big corporations I, I know these people I, I was one of them and I know that craftsman is a really rather loaded phrase. You know, mm -hmm. it, it implies that they might be a perfectionist, they're a bit old-fashioned, irrelevant, you know, they're not like serious corporate people like us. And so calling the context-driven school craftsmen is, I thought, it was a rather, it was a weasel word. It, it sounds like it's neutral, maybe complimentary, but when, when the standards lobby are speaking to their target market, uh, the suckers who will buy standards, uh, it's quite an emotive phrase that sort of defines the opponents as being irrelevant. So Don't worry really about them. it's really a backhanded comment, right? It's, um, it's... Or is it more of a kind of a keyword? A backhanded comment? It's maybe the opposite of that. It's a sort of slur dressed up oh, in a okay. nice sweet word. Oh, fair enough. Because, you know, we hear it and think, yeah, craftsmen, that's good, that's us. Right. Whereas right. the people that are buying testing services think, oh, craftsmen, yeah, they're nothing, they're nothing to do with with us, nothing to do with the sort of business that we're in. So what did you hope were the main takeaways for the audience after your talk? Well, I, that was what really, really blew me away. I thought that I'd say my piece and there'd be a few questions. Maybe people would say... But meanwhile, yeah. you've created a bit of a buzz around here. Well, that, that was it. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> yeah, there might be a bit of discussion and then, you know, we'd hit the bar and that would be it. Right. And there might, there might be a bit of follow-on discussion, but... You know, I was just totally gobsmacked. Does, gob does that mean anything to say to the other? Yes, yes, it does. All right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. When it came to the questions, there was this red card went up at the back, and yeah. the red card means stop everything. I've got really something, something really important to say. Mm -hmm. And it, it was Karen Johnson, and I thought, whoa, whoa. that's scary. <laughs> Karen, Karen is waving a red card. You know she's and, serious. Well, yeah, this, this, 
we could be into deep, deep water here. But she, our question was, you know, what, what do you think we should do about it? And that, that really rather took me aback because I just thought, yeah, we're going to talk about it. And mm -hmm. she said, no, we, you know, we need to actually do something. And she um, said, we'll, we'll get a petition. And actually, it's turned into two petitions. One That's right. That's yeah, right. and um, people have really got quite excited about it, and they've been talking about it. And uh, you know, there was some well. And the good news is, we got a chance to uh, at, at lunch. We we threw all of this together so that we could do a special session just with Karen to talk about just specifically that. Oh, Her really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so if you're if you're watching online, and and for you later, we're gonna post that to YouTube so you can yeah. check that out. Yeah. Um, and she talked in depth about why she why she went into it, how she approached it. She actually read through it and discussed it a little bit so yeah. that others could participate in it. That's great. Yeah. So it looks like it's been kind of an interesting movement. Um, so what other kind of feedback have you gotten about your talk? Um, well, most of it was um, complimentary. Well, that's um, good. But the important feedback was... Yeah, we, we do need to do something. That's right. And I, I didn't really expect the challenge to be picked up that way. Um, the, the important word is consensus. Mm -hmm. um, standards should only be adopted if there is consensus amongst the profession. And the, the ISO 29119 lobby, the, way, the working group, the way they've gone about it, it's marginalised everyone that doesn't think the same way as them, mm -hmm. and they do not have consensus. And I think it's important that um, uh, AST and like-minded testers do speak out and go to ISO to say, look, you've got really clear rules about consent, the consensus that's required right. to implement the standard. And you know, without going into the merits of uh, ISO 29119, right. Uh, the fact that AS, so many people in AST are opposed to it shows that there isn't consensus. Mm. Uh, consensus is, is defined as the absence, sorry, general agreement and the absence of sustained opposition from a significant part of the, the community, the profession. And clearly there's not general agreement. Um, you know, if we kick up a fuss, that shows that there is sustained opposition. Right. And if AST is not important in testing, then there's something wrong with your definition of testing. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. So how, how did you get to the point where this was of interest to you? Um, it's, well, I've got a rather strange background because I, never, I was never able to stay for a long time in one role because I get a bit bored. <laughs> and so I kept moving around. Um, and so I spent several years as a computer auditor. Mm -hmm. And that was where I really learned about IT because before that I'd been a developer and it was just fun. You know, they'd pay me to play around with computers and it didn't matter what the business did, they just gave us the money and that was fine. <laughs> uh, but then I went into computer and then I was able to see, it was a big insurance company in the UK, and I was able to see how everything fitted together and I had to speak to people and understand and I had to ask senior people tough questions and you know, just stay and sit stay there sitting smiling at them when they threatened to throw me out of the office for being cheeky. Yikes. Yeah, it was, it, it was a big growing up experience. Um, but so, you know, I'm an auditor as well as a tester. In fact, maybe naturally I'm more of an auditor than a tester because you know, I've got the political nous, you know, I've, I understand how big corporations work and I can ask these awkward questions. And um, I'm not just happy sitting playing around with applications, which is good fun. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I like testing too, but I was seeing st a lot of things that really offended my instincts, my training mm -hmm. as an auditor, because I, I worked in a really great place that was quite advanced at the time. It was into risk-based auditing. Yeah. And it wasn't a matter of running down a tick list, um, just confirming that things had been done. It was really thinking about mm -hmm. how whether the right things are being done in the context. It was really very similar to context-driven testing. And I saw that the way that ISO, the ISO 29119 standard was being pushed, and, and similar standards, I saw that they were based on an assumption that do it this way, and it's, it, there was a message that this is what will keep the auditors happy. Oh, I'd worked as an sure. auditor, I knew what good auditors require, and I know what bad auditors do. And I know that 
the way that um, 29119 was being pushed was it was like meat and drink to the, the bad auditors, the dysfunctional audit departments. So I've seen them, mm -hmm. um, but a good auditor does not expect um, slavish compliant mm -hmm. to an arbitrary general industry standard. They're wanting people to show that they're doing the right thing in that For context. their business. And so, yeah, it, it really bugged me mm. that um, I saw this ISO standard being pushed forward as if it was the way that was going to um, allow people to develop high quality applications. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, a panacea. Exactly, okay. and um, it's also it's offended me the way I see it being marketed. Um, we, I've seen consultancies, uh, big firms pushing um, ISO two nine one one nine is uh, it's it's snake oil. It's give there's there's a there's a phrase I used in my talk that um, it's a, a, a U.S. testing consultancy used has used it. It's talking about peace of mind. Right. What's that got to do with testing? Right. Uh, yes, we can give people peace of mind, but they want to well, know the truth, even if it sucks. Right, right. and I, I've even told people that it's not about peace of mind. In yes. fact, if I'm doing my job right, I'm bringing forward the things that keep people, that could or will keep people up at night. Yes, well, I, exactly. It actually that, runs counter well, to that. That brings, me, that brings us exactly back to um, auditing again. There's so much in common. Um, there's a phrase that has been going round and round in auditing circles over the last year or two. You know, the stakeholders, the big people, they need to know about the risks yeah, that keep them absolutely. awake at night. Right. They, they what don't. are the risks that matter? What, what's keeping them awake at night? You know, how can we give them what they need to know? Answer and that, for that, yeah. Yeah, and you know, testers and auditors, are, they're, they're looking, they've got a similar perspective, a similar mindset, but mm -hmm. they're looking from different viewpoints and it's got the two professions have got such a lot in common, and they should be speaking to each other. Yeah. Because uh, in a big uh, corporation, the the auditors are really clued up about what's going on, and they understand how things fit together. And if testers speak to the auditors, they can get some good ideas. And right. auditors can definitely learn from testers too. I mean, um, when I learned, first came across exploratory testing, I thought, hey, that was what we used to try and do. Because when I was an auditor and we were looking at an application, we weren't looking at the spec to see if it complied with the spec. The spec didn't matter. It was maybe a few years old. Right. We were in and we were you know, playing with that application, trying to break it. You know, what can we do with this that it's not meant to do? Right. You know, it was an insurance company. You know, and an insurance company does nothing but churn money around and pay it out. So fraud was a huge problem. So we were always going in to play with applications thinking, right, how can we break this? Right. right. You know, how can, <laughs> yep. how, can, how can we screw some money out here? And you know, if we'd had uh, really good training you know, from likes of James Bach or Michael Bolton mm -hmm. and exploratory testing, that would have been invaluable. Wow. And that's something that you yeah. know, testers should be saying to auditors, you know, we've got skills that can help you. you know, you've got knowledge that can help us. And I, I've done FDA testing before and I've interacted with auditors and I've always felt that way. Yeah. I've always felt like the, the auditing community and the testing community were a lot in the same in that they're trying to highlight risk. Yeah. You know, they're not trying to trap yeah. people, you know, and, and I think I think testers, and D, you can kind of jump in on this if you think so. I think testers sometimes feel like they're the ones that are either the arbiters of bad news yep. or people oh, yes. feel like testers are always trying to out. They're out to get them, right? Yeah. You know, we're uh, out yeah. to get them. And well, there's people the certainly case, think right? that about auditors, but you know, both professions need guts. Um, you need to have integrity. You've got to be brave enough to tell really unwelcome truths. To important people, right? Indeed. And the good, the good audits and the good the testers data. get a bit of a buzz out of that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure. They don't wet their their pants at the thought. They think this is this is actually quite fun. <laughs> they like that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it, you know you have to deliver bad news and you have to be able to have the information and the data to back it up. Yeah. And it's a oh, lot yeah. of work to do that yeah. really well. And yeah, the, the auditor's mantra is you know evidence, evidence, evidence. Right. Right. Indeed. Indeed. And that, that's. Test, testing too. So, any other takeaways from your talk? Um, if you were to yeah. do it again, what would you change? What would I change? I'd actually leave. I used um, hair braiders as an example of licensing, and I got into a bit of a debate on 
Twitter about how regulated hair braid, braiders really were. Really well, and it's, it was one of these arguments. That I'm prepared. To, I'm quite happy to say I'm wrong, and I don't care. Right. <laughs> it's not. It's not really the biggest deal. Well, you can't be right all the time. Yeah. And if that's the but worst actually, thing, I think I was right. right. I should have qualified it. But it's. <laughs> so, but it's not a big enough deal. I'd probably just strip it out and use something else. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. We'd love to have you back as a speaker, as attendee, either one. I know I enjoyed your talk. It was oh, very, very informative. Uh-huh. I was really looking forward to it, and it it hit the mark. Exactly. Oh, good, good. And the fact that you, there was a spin off effort is just absolutely amazing. Well, yeah, it is amazing. I just, I really, I really was astonished at that. Fantastic. It was like I was pushing against the door that I thought was locked and it just went flying nope. open. <laughs> right open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the right place to do it. Yeah. Well, excellent. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. And I've enjoy the it. rest of the evening.